Well, hello friends, Mark Holmes here, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, it don't work without you guys, man. Shout out to all of the Dallas Cowboy Joe Blue Sports Reporters that went in there and trolled Philly 500's ass. That's right, troll that weed's ass. Now, I, I got to, have you looked at Philly 500? Have you looked at him? I was sitting there looking during his live stream a bit there, and, and looking at the beard, I swear he looks like Big Ben. They both look like somebody who's homeless. I mean, come on. Let, let's be honest. That beard on Big Ben, you're like, that's an NFL quarterback? Really? Really? Okay, so I have a new motto right now. Keep your ass at home. Keep it at home. If you got to go out, get what you need and get your ass back home. Okay? Be cool. A little time at home ain't going to hurt nobody. Half of you people are always saying, man, I don't want to go work there. I want to stay home in bed. Yeah, well, you know what? You can do that now. Why don't you take advantage of it? Now, all of a sudden, there's all this uh, coronavirus and stuff out there. Now, everybody want to go out. Stay your ass at home. This is how strong I am about this. I don't know if, if they're still open or not, but, you know, I got my Joe Boo shot glass. Shout out to all you members. Shout out to you. I've got about 32 of the spread the mojo ones left. And somebody pointed out that saying spread, you don't want to talk about spread. So I'm thinking about redoing some ones special for this limited edition. Hopefully it's going to be limited. Uh, if you keep your ass at home, it will be limited. But instead, on the back of it, it's going to say, keep your ass at home. Keep it at home, okay? Let me know if you like that idea because I'll I order. It's uh, 136 of them, I think. Keep your ass at home. I'm telling you. Listen, we got plenty of entertainment right here on the Joe Boo Sports Report for you. And we've got, of course, the Dallas Cowboys. And the Dallas Cowboys, well, let's be honest, the Dallas Cowboys keep us entertained. So, here's the latest news from the star. Is that the Dallas Cowboys are open. Well, they're not actually open. They're, they're, they're actually shut down because of corona, coronavirus. And they're keeping their ass at home and doing business. But they're doing their business from home. Okay? So they are open to the idea of having some snacks while they're keeping their ass at home. Snacks Harrison. They're open to that possibility of signing him. Now, you got to look at Gerald McCoy. One of the reasons why he wanted to come to Dallas is because he's from, I think, Oklahoma. So this is close to home for him. So he's got family and things that'll easily be able to travel to Texas. That and, of course, <laughs> we the Cowboys. And you want to be, you know, part of America's team. It's definitely going to give you a platform because pretty much everybody got a show in Dallas. Everybody, I mean, I think the punters even got his own show. But be that as it may, Snacks Harrison. Oh, my God. Oh my God, oh, oh my God, snacks. You, 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 can see the, you can see the size now, can't you? You know, we put Snickers bars and, you know, little bags of chips. You know, hold, hold a bag of chips up on the side or something. Snacks, snacks, we got snacks. Snacks Harrison, he's older, he is 32. And I see my group, Q and Jet D, uh, Q, Jet D, and Cowboy 76, they're like texting the heck out of me. I don't know if something big's happening out there other than keeping your ass at home. But Snacks Harrison, they're open to the idea because here's what they're looking at. Now, some of you guys say, oh, let's go get Giovanni and Clowney. And I say, listen, that is a name guy. That's not a player. That's a guy whose name you know. You know him because, well, they're always talking about it. You know him because Seattle made the big trade for him. You know, third round picking a couple of guys and things. Didn't work out. Three sacks and uh, maybe 11 quarterback hits. That was it. And they said, okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. And he's looking for $22, 23000000 million. Now, I heard somebody offered him, I want to say 14 14 I, I mean, that sounds that sounds like a better number. Sounds like a better number, but that's still quite a bit because if I can get snacks 
and Gerald McCoy for less money than Giovanni and Clowney? Bet. Bet. Now, they're older. Like I said, they are older guys. But see, what you want is a rotation. And see, the Dallas Cowboys, what they're trying to do is, is this. And, I, and this fire's hot. Let me turn this down a little bit. It, it's kind of like a big difference between high as hell. Because see, like, high as hell. Woo! Tear the, burn, burn the roof down. And then when you go down low, sometimes it goes too low. See, like, like okay, right there, right there, right there. Mm, maybe. Okay. But now this side of the face isn't burning up anymore. See, and you don't want to have a hot face because then you're worried, that, oh, is that a fever? No, that was the fire. And no, I haven't been drinking, but maybe I should. I'm just excited about the whole prospect of snacks coming to Dallas. So the Cowboys are interested for the right price. And I am too, because you don't want to overpay. You don't want to make crazy moves like the Texans, getting rid of Hopkins, because I see, you know, they're sitting there talking about the running back. Oh, yeah, we're going to have a great running back. Yeah, but you had a great wide receiver and um, so on. Okay, just looking at a message. Um, so snacks will help our defense immensely. I have said this till I am literally blue like the fire that's in here. And people don't seem to understand this because people keep wanting to say, get a great safety, get a great cornerback. But I tell you, my man, let's say I, I'm a value type guy, okay? I try and get the biggest bang for the buck. So you get a great cornerback, it doesn't do, what do you think a great cornerback does for your linebackers? I'll wait. But see, here's the thing. You do need great cornerbacks. I'm not going to say you don't. But see, here's the thing. Which is better if you have a shutdown corner, okay, who can shut down one guy. Now keep in mind there's going to be at least one other guy that's got to be shut down or sometimes two or three. So if you have one great cornerback and you just have average guys over there, how much does it help the other guys? Okay. If you have an incredible push, one guy, one guy, just, just one guy, if we had one guy in the middle who can collapse the pocket, so when the quarterback is looking at the center or up under the center and he sees this big guy who at the moment that the ball is snapped can push the center back towards the quarterback that quarterback's like whoa my knees my knees uh stay off my knees let me get out of here what that does is it makes the guys outside more effective because the quarterback has now less room to move he can't step up and he's blocking some of his vision and then they start getting scared so what that means is then that quarterback is looking to get rid of the ball quicker. That in chance, that, that right there helps the cornerbacks because instead of a quarterback being there with clear vision and being able to stay there all day until a guy gets open, he's got maybe two seconds at most. That's thing number one. Number two. If you get a mean, nasty, roll-off dumpster in the middle that you can't move, you're probably going to have to use a double team. Or you're going to have to bring a tight end in motion and use a wham block. Or, 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 or use the running back to help out on that guy. So you know what that does for the guys on the outside? It lessens the chances that, say, D-Law is getting double teamed. Makes it easier for his pass rush. And guess what? We gave up 4.6 yards up the middle, you know, right up under the center. The most on the defensive line, 4.6 yards. That's more yards than Zeke Elliott averaged on the season in the middle, in the middle of the field. That guy there as a nose guard, 
sorry, nose tackle, went old school on you. Makes it that much harder to run in that spot. Oh, and since that guy is so big and massive and heavy that sometimes you got to take the guard and double team to try and move him out. And you know what that does for those linebackers? That keeps them clean. Because what a lot of people don't understand, because they look at the numbers and say, oh, man, you know, those snacks, man, he only got like, you know, say 37 tackles. That ain't that many tackles. Look at what Sean Lee, Sean Lee got like 100 tackles. Because there's a reason for that. I remember my first JV game at JMU. Nose guard. Sorry, nose tackle now. They shaded me into the gap. And I was quick enough that what I could do is I could shoot the gap. I would dip my shoulder. You know, I got the guard right here on my outside shoulder. I could dip and rip as soon as that ball was snapped. And some of the times I could grab the quarterback as he took the ball, took the snap, and was trying to turn around and get the running back. And I remember doing that, getting as soon, I got so far in the backfield, as soon as the running back got the ball right here, tackled him. I was just like, yes, yes, look at me, I'm God. And when I got on the sidelines, I literally got cussed out by my coach. I'm like, the fuck? He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm making a damn good play. Did you see me tagging the guy five yards behind the line of scrimmage? He said, what is your job? Your job is to occupy the offensive lineman and keep the linebackers clean. But I'm like, but coach, 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 coach. I got the guy in the backfield. That's not your job. Your job is to keep your linebackers clean so they make the play. You may have made that play this time, but the next time, what happens if you miss? What happens if it's a screen play? Then the linebackers are exposed. You do your assignment, and your assignment is to keep the linebackers clean. I'm like, well, damn, because that's the way the defenses are made. As defensive linemen, our number one responsibility is Keep those guys' jerseys clean so they can make the play. Stuff the middle. Keep the offensive lineman from being able to make a hole. That's the responsibility. And that's something that we have been falling short on it because of our philosophy of having lightweight speedsters, racing lizards, as Rod Martinelli would like to call them. You need guys that can get down and dirty and will just punch the offensive line in the mouth. And that's the Snacks Harrison. So if you can get a Snacks Harrison for $6 million, one or two year deal, along with the Gerald McCoy, and now that you got <laughs> Clinton Dix out there, if you get yourself another cornerback, now you look at it and say, okay, I can go into the season with any of these guys. When I get to the draft, I can take the best player available. Because it might be a wide receiver. It, it really might. It, it might be a tight end. Although I wouldn't recommend taking a tight end you know, that high. But you understand where I'm going. Hell, it might be a cornerback or a safety. I, really, it's safety. Second round for safety. Sa safety in the second round. But it might also be a young trash can, excuse me, roll off dumpster with a bad attitude. But you now have options. And to look at it that this way, the Cowboys, for, forget about the whole thing of you can't pay Dak Prescott because you won't be able to make any moves in free agency. You don't have to get the team. Well, before they make another move and before they even get Dak's deal finally done where they'll save some money, they still got $26 million. Not bad. So, I am going to uh, turn out the lights because I'm keeping my ass at home. Keep it at home. You keep your ass at home too. My wife is actually watching. She's Netflixing. And um, I, I have a problem with Netflixing. I, I mean, I'd, li I'd like to do the Netflix and chill. That, that part I'm okay with. But I can't sit still more than like one or two episodes of, of anything. 
And there's shows that you watch that are like, oh, wow, these are really interesting. But she will literally, you know, she might start out at 11, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning and, 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 and only get up for food and bathroom, you know. And, and I just can't do that. I, I can't, I, you know, and, 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 and I get watching and, oh, yeah, this is cool. And it's like, I got to move my body. I'm going crazy. And then by the time I go back, it's like three or four episodes down the road. And now I lost, lost that. And then you, you, you ask, well, what's going on? And she's like, shh, shh. It's like. So I know, don't don't even try to, don't even try and get into them. So she's watching All American, and it, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay, uh, I I missed the first couple of episodes of the thing. It's still season one. Um, he, he, he the one kid is from Crenshaw, and he's with a buddy who is in Beverly Hills, and I think they're actually brothers because the coach, Tay Diggs, he, he, Tay Diggs is the coach, and he brought him from Crenshaw. I, I I'm trying to understand. And it's it's a lot, it's a lot. But they got football in it. They got football in it. So uh, you know, maybe they have some clip notes or something so I can try and keep up. But let me turn off the lights because well, it's another day of uh, keeping my ass at home. And I have been home. Uh, you look, I'm proud to say that I have not left my property since Wednesday. My truck has not moved, and I'm happy about that. And I hope, please, for God's sakes, people, take this serious, okay? The sooner we start taking this serious, the sooner we can get back to life and back to reality, okay? I'm not bullshitting you. Stay home. All right, y'all. I'll see you. Guys, what, what are y'all texting? I can't keep up with you guys. I can't keep up with you. See you in the morning. Unless some news breaks out. <laughs>